Hi guys, welcome back to our Everglades classroom out here at Grassy Waters Preserve. I'm your host, Nandy, and I've got a very special guest for us today. She's going to be talking about threatened and endangered species, and she's brought one of them out for us to visit with. We're also going to be taking a few questions from our Palm Beach County school students, so if you guys are ready to go, let's go. Ashley, come on out here. Sheldon here, who is a gopher tortoise. Uh, so gopher tortoises are a pretty important species to have in our environment. They are a keystone species, which means that they help other animals, uh, okay. depending on what it is. His situation is that he bit, digs all these burrows that are pretty extensive. So burrows that are about 15 feet long and about 6 feet deep. Um, can house up to 350 other species in there. Um, so he's a pretty important animal to have around. Wow, and I see we've got a photo of the uh, burrow here, correct? Absolutely. So these burrows are especially important during wildfires and even during prescribed fires because they're going to be um, the most important place for a lot of animals to find shelter um, just to get away from the fire in general. Okay, excellent. And um, I've got a question that actually would be great to answer about the burrows. Zane, I've got your question here. Sophomore from Jupiter High School. Zane would like to know, Ashley, do gopher tortoise burrows become flooded during heavy rainfall? Absolutely. That's actually what happened to Sheldon here. Uh, what happened was uh, a good Samaritan saw that Sheldon was actually sitting outside of his burrow for far too long, so they thought that maybe uh, he was lost or injured in some sort of way, but what happens with all the high rain, uh, his burrow got flooded, and usually what they just do is they go and dig a new hole, uh, so there's nothing you should do during high rain. Perfect. All right, so for flooding, they're just going to go and dig a new burrow, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right, let's roll on. Let me see who I've got here. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Freshman at Forest Hill High School. Ashley Mark would like to know, Sheldon's taking a walk there. <laughs> Ashley Mark would like to know, what is actually the biggest threat to these animals? It's going to be more human encroachment slash fragmentation of habitats because as we start to uh, overpopulate, we're going to need more and more uh, places to build, and that usually in in includes the habitat of gopher tortoises, unfortunately, and these guys are super picky. So if we were to uh, start encroaching, then we're going to fragment their habitats, and they're going to be uh, a little extra picky and have to move, and we don't want them to get into roadways. That and uh, habitats like the scrub habitat is actually a pretty preferred spot because it's nice and uh, it's nice and sandy. It's that loose soil they look for. But if we don't maintain those habitats uh, with prescribed burns, then it becomes a forest, and that's not what they want. Okay, and I see Sheldon definitely has some nice nails there for digging that burrow, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Those feet are definitely designed for it. All right, let me ask you this next question real quick. When people keep gopher tortoises home, when they take them home and keep them as pets, does that affect their population? This is Christian. Um, hey, Christian, senior from Cardinal Newman High School. So actually, yeah, um, you keep these animals as pets? It's actually highly illegal to even touch these animals. The only ones really that should be touching them are rehabbers, biologists, and the uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife Officers. But unfortunately, people do tend to take them home because they don't really know that they shouldn't. Um, and when they do, they don't have the research done, so unfortunately the animal does get ill. Uh, we don't want to do that at all. These guys are very much federally protected, so we want to leave them be. And even taking one out actually eliminates the gene pool by so much because these guys take about 10 uh, to 21 years to reach sexual maturity and then when they do they only lay about five to nine eggs every year and only five percent survive so that's a pretty big drastic number if you were to take just one tortoise. Wow so that would really be devastating to the population. Absolutely. Hmm, that is that's definitely something to consider. 
Um, let's see, uh, Rizon, I think your name, I'm going to pronounce it Rizon, sophomore at Jupiter High School. How you doing, Rizon? What is the most effective way to preserve the land for the gopher tortoises is what Rizon would like to know. A lot of people don't have the general education about these animals, so the more we can educate people on why they're here, why they're so important to keep, and why they're so important in their, in their habitats, the more people are going to want to protect them. So I think through education we can preserve their land. Excellent. Uh, so we've gotten some really good information today about the gopher tortoise. Some really great questions coming from you guys. Um, I think, Ashley, you've got someone else for us to visit with too, right? I do. I have Bruno the American Crocodile. All right. So we're going to give Ashley just a moment for her to wrap up and um, capture Sheldon and put him back in his safe place. And then we'll be right back with Ashley.